So, hi everybody and welcome back. And it's really nice to see that so many are still with us uh, as the afternoon uh, goes by. So, um, this is Jonathan and myself, and you might have uh, already spotted that we are the co-founders of Sacred Earth Activism. And we will give you a kind of a bit of an insight into sacred earth activism, but also uh, talk about the action uh, of what we do and also um, hopefully give you some ideas how you can weave the sacred into your actions. Now, the whole summit is, of course, about this. And uh, you have heard already today, just with the first uh, four speakers, that there are so many different ways we can become active. But so this is about sacred earth activism. And just to introduce myself very quick, briefly, I'm Krista, and um, I'm a psychologist, a shamanic teacher, call myself a kind of a medicine woman. Uh, I'm also an author. I have written a few books. I worked in my previous life as a university lecturer and other bits internationally. And um, yeah, I'm the co-founder of Sacred Earth Activism. So the first thing we wanted to do is kind of give you an idea about what our mission is. And our mission is really uh, quite simple. It's not that easy to do, but it's quite simple. And the mission is to bring the sacred into the change movement. And it all started in a way that Jonathan and myself were talking about this on and off. And I don't actually quite remember how we came up with it, but um, we knew each other a bit because we both worked into the, in the wider field of earth spirituality in a very uh, broad sense. And then in 2019, we were both involved independently in the big XR Extinction Rebellion action in London. And uh, we um, did that in various ways. Uh, Jonathan did a big ceremony and I think a drumming circle and I was stewarding up there and also joined in with the face group and so on. And um, we started chatting and we both felt that um, an organization that brought together activism with Earth spirituality was actually missing. So there was a lot of action out there. And in those days, of course, uh, the new age wave was still very, very strong and they all talked about uh, change, but uh, they didn't actually do much. And so we felt something that combines both would be a good idea. Um, and then we communicated on and off. Um, and in 2019, 2020, in that winter, we started the Facebook group, uh, Sacred Earth Activism. So it started as a Facebook group. And then we met up three quarters of a year later in October, 2020, because we just felt we needed a bigger vision and we needed to get together now. Jonathan is sitting in Canterbury and I am in the deepest Cornwall. So we met up in the metropolis London and um, began to kind of envisage what we actually wanted to create here. Um, and out of that bigger vision, which uh, can be kind of um, shortened down to that strap line to bring the sacred into the change movement and support the change movement. Out of that bigger vision, we then started to create uh, a website and to talk more about concrete involvement in uh, direct action. So how can we support in a sacred way and contribute in a sacred way uh, to ceremonies and other bits in direct actions which were going on? Um, and having accomplished that, lockdown started, which uh, set everybody back. So uh, these various lockdowns took place. And this is when we actually facilitated the first Sacred Earth Activism Conference. And we pulled that out of a hat in a way, Jonathan, you must admit. We really pulled it out of a hat. And we got so much positive response 
that we really were encouraged to uh, keep going. So we created a website and uh, we um, really pushed the Facebook group. We did another one in uh, October 21, but never mind. So the conferences. And since then, uh, we have been working on three levels online. And I will go into uh, two of those and then pass over to uh, Jonathan. So we have been uh, working on three levels. One is online. The other one was uh, information sharing and supporting different groups. Uh, and the third kind of strand uh, of the work is being involved in direct action or creating our own direct actions. So uh, this is kind of what evolved uh, out of this visioning meeting in London over time now. So how do we do that? So let's look at the online strand first. So online, um, we offer events and they are mainly free. For many, for a long time, they were completely free, but of course the website and other stuff needs financing. So uh, our online events are still mainly free. So we offer uh, monthly gatherings for people interested in certain sacred activism and different people from different uh, groups usually come together. And it's just a, a forum to share ideas to come together. So that's the monthly gatherings. Um, we also offer online ceremonies um, to work towards change. We have, oh, I don't remember how many, but we have done loads. We react partly. So we have offered peace ceremonies after the, uh, when Ukraine started, uh, Gaza. Um, there were other peace ceremonies. <laughs> we have done quite a bit of work to support um, indigenous issues, uh, Brazil, Peru, and other uh, areas of the world. So we created ceremonies and information and invited people in for free and so on. And other movements like uh, the Right to Roam movement. Um, there are others, but so this is what happens online. So, and then of course there are the summits and the conferences online, which uh, in a way they are to inspire almost because to, to, to make people aware that there is a lot going on. And again, those we combine usually uh, projects and project leaders and direct people who work directly on the ground, ground uh, with people who, uh, with wisdom teachers or with people who like uh, Helen right now, who work on a different level, uh, or the ceremonial work with, uh, which Karen did this morning. So the um, summits and conferences also happen online. We also on and off offer Earth Talks where we invite um, a relatively well-known uh, person who has actually something to say um, and, and, and who we feel is uh, the message is important to give a talk. And again, we open that usually uh, to everybody for free. So this is what we do online. We do a few more bits, but that's the main stuff. Now, the other strand is information sharing and supporting groups and initiatives. And I think that's quite an important strand because uh, there are so many beautiful initiatives and all we see in a way, if we look at the bigger picture at the moment, is of course a lot of devastation. And uh, this is not to say that we should close our eyes to the dark. There is a lot of dark out there, but there are also loads and loads of initiatives. And um, it's important at this moment in time, I think, to understand that we can easily flip into hopeless and helplessness uh, because we don't know that there is so much out there where we can join in. And somebody quite famous, uh, I don't remember who, uh, said, uh, said hope comes from action. And I think that's quite an important one. And the action can be very, very small doesn't have to be huge. So we do information sharing and we support groups and initiatives. Um, 
So we share actually information of quite a lot of groups, such as Right to Rome, the Sacred Water Movement, the Stonehenge Alliance. We have a speaker, the, the chair of the Stonehenge Alliance with us uh, tomorrow. Uh, nature rights, you saw Mumta this morning uh, briefly on screen. Uh, Sacred Lands, we support food initiatives. Uh, some of the contributions uh, which we got for for this conference uh, will will uh, there will some of it will go to crops not shops so we we support in that way but we also support just to having them out there to giving them a platform and we support them in their direct action so food initiatives extinction rebellion unity earth events um I've spoken quite a bit about on the Unity Earth events, which which uh, about sacred earth activism, uh, indigenous organizations and more. And we work with various partners, national and international. Um, so we do that mainly via our website, Facebook group circles, articles, and sometimes also financially um, when we can. Uh, because none of us gets paid. It, this is this is completely and utterly uh, just based on uh, voluntary work, which we all put in. Now, the last thing I wanted to say, so that's the two, two strands. So uh, the first one is the online offerings and then the information sharing and supporting different groups. Um, we are now a team, so it's not not just Jonathan and I, uh, the people you saw this morning on screen, uh, form a core group. Now, our third strand is concrete actions, and we were over the last few years involved in various actions uh, on the ground, and we have also created our own check actions. But I'll pass you over to Jonathan for that, because he will give you an overview uh, over that. So over to you. Thanks, Krista. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to run through a couple of examples. And and sort of the reason being is over this weekend, you're hearing about different forms of doing sacred activism. And it sort of helps to give a little bit of context about how we do sacred activism. You've heard kind of people talking about the storytelling aspect about how that kind of helps we reweave our connection with the land as one example from Helen um we've got a whole weekend of, of different examples there um but as Krista introduced what initially brought us together to form sacred earth activism is that we were both engaged in the environmental movement in various campaigns and change movements and it was part of our commitment within what we were doing to be bringing the sacred into that, that it weren't, wasn't just being a, um, a pointing fingers exercise. It was about how those efforts for change can be a way that we can reweave our connection with the land and inspire. And, um, you know, Krista and myself, our spiritual paths uh, are ones that are rooted in earth centered spiritual practice, are animistic in that they acknowledge kind of the the spirits of the land and uh shamanic in the way that they uh, involve ways of communicating and connecting with those and within those wait, wait. paths and ways of working yeah. we could just turn the mic off Ready. there thank you within those ways that we that we work uh, ceremony is a, a part of that and the role and the power of ceremony. One thing that uh, Krista didn't mention as an example, right kind of back in terms of, of working with um, XR before we started talking about sacred earth activism, what, as well as working as a steward within XR, Krista was holding ceremonies at the river to help kind of bring that connection to the land and, and a sacred relationship and sacred connection with the land for those people who are involved in direct action and who are going to be heading to London for it. So it's been there working with and weaving ceremony in. So I wanted just to share a few examples of the ways in which we've done that with the the past direct actions that we've done. Um, one example will be Stonehenge. Uh, we've got a talk tomorrow about Stonehenge as the, the matter is continuing there. But we were invited back in 2020 um, to come and hold ceremony when there was a large protest action shortly after um, 
when it was announced then in 2020 that they were going to be um, carving this tunnel and fly over in double expressway through the sacred landscape of Stonehenge. And there were a lot of people there who were opposing the scheme for lots of different reasons, uh, who were all gathering together at Stonehenge that, that day in December in 2020. And we were asked to open the whole day in ceremony so that the day begin from that place of connection, connection together as a group, but also with the land and also with that, that, that deep time connection with the ancient spirits of the land there. And to, to come together around our love for the land. We were, you know, there was a lot of kind of reasons to be in opposition with the road scheme, with tunnel builders, with road builders. But what brought us all there primarily was our love for the land. And we held a, a ceremony there just to bring that as our opening focus. There were some beautiful photos for the day. Um, Annie talking this morning about the, the magical work at Stonehenge, building that rainbow dome over that is then released. Well, that day, while we were all there gathered for that ceremony, this absolutely incredible rainbow formed over Stonehenge. And uh, I have to kind of, kind of uh, dig back through the um, Facebook page or the group. There'll be plenty of photos of it. But that was a truly magical start of something that we continued with weaving ceremony with over the subsequent new moons and full moons. We continued in ceremony in connecting with the land. And as Krista mentioned and has been related to kind of the, the talks that there have been earlier, a big part of our work, working with our, uh, yeah, with that kind of shamanic or shamanistic spirit work ways is connecting with the land, speaking to the land, listening to the land, asking what it is wanting of us, asking how we can be of service to it, how we can support it, um, talking to it about what's going on, about who we are and what we're doing, and letting that be our, our guide. And those ceremonies went on for a very, very long while throughout the, the time until we got to the court hearing of the uh, for Stonehenge for the last one. There's been a more recent one, as tomorrow's talk we'll be focusing on with John Adams. Um, but that one then was in 2021. And curiously, the people who scheduled that court hearing scheduled it a couple of days after summer solstice, you know, not realising that there's going to be a huge, huge focus of energy around summer solstice in connection with Stonehenge anyway, of people who are wanting to... Uh, who are sending that energy for its protection. Now we held a fire ceremony. And we shared some of the photos recently of that, but we held a fire ceremony on the eve of the solstice and everybody present, a huge, huge number of people put wood on the fire filled with their prayers for Stonehenge, for the protection of that sacred landscape. And that fire was kept burning from the eve of the solstice over the next few days until the end of the week. So that was probably Sunday night. And the court hearing was the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of that week. And that fire was kept there, held there, just close to Stonehenge at the resistance camp. And we took a flame from that in a, first of all, in a miner's lantern, just to kind of keep it going. And it joined us in one of the, the lanterns like we have this weekend's candle going with. And that held vigil outside the, um, the Royal Courts of Justice while the hearing was going on with people coming in and connecting and with that, just to really hone in those prayers and hold that space. That was a, a, a kind of a beautifully powerful cycle of ceremony that we held there for Stonehenge. The court hearing result that week um, was ruled that the tunnel and the, um, super, the tunnel and the road uh, scheme that they were planning was unlawful. Um, unfortunately, since then, the government have reshuffled the papers and put it back through and we'll be hearing tomorrow a bit more about the, the kind of the update on the, the campaign with that. Um, that was one example of what we what we had been involved in. Another one that I'd like to share is um, with the uh, in support of XR. We held a cycle of ceremony alongside one of the rebellions that they held. The main focus that year, this was April 2022, was. Um, that we were, uh, the, the main message was about end fossil fuels, stop fossil fuels now and, and just stop oil. 
a lot of that was the central theme. And I've kind of seen that there's been mention of Joanna Macy in the comments. Um, there's a, a kind of a key message that kind of uh, was felt among kind of a group that included us that, yes, it's fine just to it's fine to say what we want to move away from or stop. But we should also start to focus on where we want to put the arrow. And we created a cycle of ceremony that invited people to focus on those visions for the future, on what a world might be like in a world beyond fossil fuels. And we invited everybody before that London rebellion to go down to their local water course, go down to their local river or stream or lake and hold a small personal or kind of, you know, small group ceremony there, gather some water from that river and speak to it, what your visions and your prayers are for the future, for a world beyond fossil fuels. Some people who then were coming to London brought that water with them. And at the quarter moon, that happening at the new moon, so a week later at the quarter moon, we welcomed those waters. And in the centre of London, in Hyde Park, just next to uh, Diana's memorial fountain, the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain, all of those waters were welcomed and put into a cauldron together. And that cauldron became that well of visions. And we held space and ceremony each day around that cauldron of water with uh, lots of, because it was right in the center of London, right in the center of Hyde Park. It became a place, an outreach spot of chatting to lots of members of the public, groups of young people, families who were going through. Uh, if I remember rightly, it was Easter holidays. So there was a lot of people kind of traveling through there. And we engaged with lots of people in conversations of, well, what would you like to see the world be like? What would be your vision of the, the future beyond fossil fuels? Interestingly, uh, kind of the older folks who were along were the ones who were more likely to say, ah, well, we're never going to see it, are we? We're never going to see any change there. The groups of young folks that we saw along were very clear on what futures they wanted to see and had lots to share. And all of them spoke those to the waters. Many picked up petals as well from some flowers that we had laid around to kind of create a, a sacred space and picked up those petals and offered them to the waters to then infuse it with those prayers. And at the end of that week, at the full moon, so the following Saturday, we uh, joined the march around London with those waters on the back of a bike trailer, uh, taking them round the streets of London and finally finishing on the shores of the Thames, over near um, the Tate Gallery. Just in front of there, there's the shores. And we held a ceremony there where we spoke to the River Thames and asked the mighty Thames to receive those prayers and to carry those out to the, the world's waters, to release those at the end there of that week. And that was a really beautiful cycle of ceremony that we, we held and we shared. And it's inspired another one recently that we were involved with um, with the Unite to Survive protest in Bath, where um, there was recently it was a, a march that was happening through Bath, but we joined with holding ceremony in that and at different places, as uh, Annie mentioned at the beginning of the day, Bath with its sacred waters is go right going back to ancient times, um, been a magical place. It's been a place where people have traveled to give their prayers to the waters. And so it seemed very fitting that we tied that into and wove that into uh, a ceremony there of giving our prayers to the waters, those then being carried around Bath with that march and at the end of the day being released into the river there. So we work with what we know, what we do, our spiritual path and practice, the techniques that, that are part of that. And it, a big part of that is, as what well, we've introduced there, is, is ceremony. To people on the call here, we may understand and appreciate that with ceremony, we are creating that sacred space. We're going into that liminal space where we can speak to something beyond something greater um, or even just something other than ourselves, that it can hear those messages, that it's not just us kind of ourselves uh, fiddling about trying to, to fix everything again, thinking that we have to do it all on our own, but we are recognizing our place within a wider uh, a wider world that we are part of a, a kind of family of life that is far more great and mysterious than we really understand and directly communicating with that 
But what we find and what we found with this is that even for those who who don't come to the ceremonies with that way of seeing the world, who don't come with that perspective, start to see in a different way. And it really does help shift and transform our ways of seeing and being in the world. And we really do believe that, you know, the way of working with ceremony that we do here at Sacred Earth Activism and weaving that into direct action really does have transformative power to for those who are taking part, for those who are watching, um, for all around, for them to be feeling that that shift and that change from it. Um, so one of the things, this is where we're leading on from what we've done before and what we're wanting to go on to do going forward. Moving forward, what we're wanting to do is share this way of working with more people. We, we have been invited and been really honoured to be invited to so many different um, uh, campaigns and actions in the past to support those with ceremony. Um, we'll get to a point, or we do get to a point very quickly where kind of our capacity is reached and we uh, know that there's a real... Um, a real call for these ceremonies out there. So moving forward, we are wanting to share this way of working um, so that more people can be empowered to bring ceremony into direct action and share our kind of our approach to it, our process, if you like, um, and our experience with it. This year, one of the things that we're going to be looking to introduce is uh, a course called Ritual in Action. And through that, we'll, we'll share that process and guide you through those different ways that we talk about of how we weave the sacred into the web of change when it comes to our involvement with direct action and holding ceremony so that you are well equipped, whether you are a, a, an environmental activist with little experience with ceremony, who's wanting to know how to bring that in or if you're somebody who's got more experience with ceremony and looking at how you can bring that to be of service within all of these greater efforts for change. So uh, that's one thing that we'll be looking forward to sharing more information with you all about in the coming months. There's a couple of other things that we're uh, involved with and, and working on at the moment that we'd like to share with you. Um, another one being a very important piece of work that reflects and echoes a couple of the talks that we've heard already and some of the, the messages that have come through that to do with our relationship with the sacred lands, uh, our um, honouring and recognising those and how we we kind of can, can reweave our, our connection to them. And that's with an important piece of work that we are uh, working on in the background, a, a group at the moment, and we'll be looking to open it out, which is the Sacred Lands Charter. And through that, uh, our mission is is kind of still evolving with that. But uh, in 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 what I can kind of uh, sum it up with at the moment is to to gain a, a greater recognition for for the uh, and protection for sacred landscapes and sites, all these places that have been part of all of those multi layers of story, as. Helen describes, but also these sites and landscapes that have been considered sacred by people. Bring people together for greater care and appreciation for these places, and also help collaborate with organisations, create a network with shared aims to help support the protection, the recognition, and the appreciation of these sites and landscapes. Within that, we are um, looking to form and connect with and support friends of groups so that local groups can connect with uh, one another and work together as friends of that particular site throughout the country, focused on that particular site, but supported by one another and different groups kind of across the network, across the country. And, um, you know, there's been people already in the, the chat commenting about their local sites, the places that they strongly connect with. We will be very interested in connecting with with anybody who's wanting to be involved and in part of a part of that. We will definitely have a, an evening, um, an event at some point kind of in the in the near future where we'll be sharing and outlining in a bit more detail of how we can be involved with that. Um, and 
be part of what is really going on on a global scale at the moment for the recognition, the respect, the honouring, the protection and the appreciation of sacred landscapes. So that's this kind of the second um, thing in uh, kind of future plans and future works that I wanted to share. The third is a little briefer. You've uh, kind of had a bit of information about it already today, as we mentioned earlier. Sacred Earth activism is uh, kind of deeply involved with the efforts for introducing this nature's rights uh, laws or legal framework or reform. Um, we've been involved with that in uh, in holding it in a sacred way. And, um, you know, as we sort of introduced at the start of the day, those of us, those who were here for that, it's an initiative that really, really does have the potential to reshape the rights framework in the UK, given, giving or recognising the, the rights of nature, the rights of the land to live and thrive. And while, you know, that's kind of talking about it very much in terms of laws, what this means on a systemic level, on a structural level, is a real chance for transformation and for healing that the, the kind of the current kind of fractured disconnect that there is in terms of our relationship with nature, which currently doesn't have any laws, that doesn't have any um, a kind of really solid uh, protections in there. You can see by the way that we the harm that we are doing to a lot of the environment that whatever is in place is not sufficient this will really change that to acknowledge a lot of that earth-centered wisdom that you know our well-being is intrinsically linked you can even say dependent on the health or and the well-being of the land that we live on walk on live with so we uh, will be sharing a lot more about the rights of nature reform and letting you know about how you can get involved and share more information about that. And, you know, this is going to be a big, big project that's going to be going on, on levels of kind of, uh, uh, kind of legal statutes and, and white papers and all the rest of it. But there's important, powerful work that we can all be a part of in our community, because what these laws really do represent is an embedding of, these animistic ways of seeing, this honouring and respecting of the land and of the rest of nature, and actually bringing that into the very structures that we have in in our legal system. So, um, you know, we're we're kind of uh, really honoured to be a part of it, really excited to be a part of it, and uh, we'll be looking at ways that we can bring more and more people involved with it for the future. So, there's some big plans that we're rolling out. Um, with those those three bits there and uh, uh we'll be sharing more in in emails but uh i guess we've got a bit of time i'm going to pass back to krista and uh got krista's got anything to add um but then other than that we'll if there's any questions do please pop them in the chat thank you yeah i just wanted to add one thing because jonathan now talked about actions and i mean we were involved in many more but we didn't want to uh overload uh you here um but one of the things we also do, and I forgot to mention that, Jonathan, if there is direct action going on anywhere, I was down at the, oh, what was it, that that uh, summit in Cornwall, they run in Cornwall, that I don't know what it was. But many, many people couldn't go. And what we did uh, parallel is we run actually a ceremony online and we have done that again and again and again and I think it was the G7 yes thank you Rubob exactly and this is a way to work as well if you really feel that you can't go somewhere to create a ceremony online and uh, invite people to come and to do something to support on that more energetic level, the people on the ground. And we have done that for HS2, we have done it at uh, Stonehenge, we have done it uh, with XR actions in London. Last time we won parallel a ceremony uh, 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 to online. And, and this is a way to, to work as well because sacred earth activism works on both levels, on the energetic level as well as on the ground. And that's kind of what we want to achieve now. But not all of us can always be on the ground. Uh, 
distances and other things. So we always offer something parallel, which is actually a really, really uh, good way of working um, to, to, to do both in a way. Yeah. Um, now, some people are asking mailing list. Um, yes, please. <laughs> John, can you uh, come in and just see what uh, what there is? Please ask questions. If I may just respond on the uh, the mailing list thing. Um, if you've kind of booked through Eventbrite, uh, you will be um, kind of, that will be adding you directly to the uh, mailing list afterwards. So hopefully that's all kind of what we'll, we'll be working seamlessly to add you on there. Um, and you'll receive an email from us after the weekend um, that will confirm that. If you're impatient to... Uh, for that automatic adding thing to, to happen. Um, please go onto the website, scroll down to the bottom of any page, and there's a section there for joining the mailing list. And we can keep in touch with you on there about things. Yeah. Any questions? I'm gonna pass over to John, just ask you to unmute. You know, most of the comments in the chat have been those of support. Uh, the only questions have been about finding out more information and getting signed up in the newsletter. And uh, I think that's a very good sign. Yeah. But I encourage you to, to ask a question if you have. Yeah. Okay. There is one which I'm seeing right now. Are you opening this network internationally? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, is we are already international. John is a practical example. He is one of our core group sitting here right now at the steering group. And um, we have people dotted around, not as organized as we are in Britain. No? And, and But we have uh, a kind of, we call it an international group. So if you would like to join the international group, which will meet up, maybe at one point next month, uh, you will hear about it if you, uh, yeah, um, if you if you get the newsletter. So if you would, so the international group is myself, John, and also Karen, who you saw this morning at the opening. She's part of it. And what we usually often look at is really uh, reacting to more worldwide issues. Yeah. So if you're interested, yes, but that's really in, in uh, we are just forming that properly, you know. Yeah. Uh, Nelly is asking uh, if there's any any plans to rectify the, the, uh, the split between the spiritual and the active. And, and I would just like to take a second to uh, direct people to the homepage there's a quote that says, it's in the convergence of spiritual people becoming active and active people becoming spiritual that the hope of humanity now rests. I think that that is a, a, a wonderful quote. And um, can either of you speak to how we can attract the active to uh, the spiritual consciousness? Because clearly the other part is being addressed. <laughs> yeah. John. Yeah, if I may jump in on that, um, that quote is kind of is is very key in kind of what we do with sacred earth activism. We find ourselves in the middle of that. So for those who are from spiritual backgrounds wanting to get involved, we've um, that that's kind of been one of the ways that we've helped direct people. And in the same way of those people who are involved in direct action and wanting to ground that more in sacred practice, we've been directing it in the other way there. Over the years, we've noticed and been aware of that there is that there is often a tension between it. Um, culturally, I think we've got a, 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 a still a, a challenge about that coming really back into connection in spiritual ways. Um, and a lot of people are, are nervous or reluctant or averse to it. When we do go and hold ceremonies out alongside direct action, the overwhelming message of people coming over is is we're really kind of pleased to see this. We didn't realize this was going to be part of it. If this is going to be more a part of it, I'll re-engage, I'll get back involved. Um, there, there is a real hunger for a more connected, engaged, embodied way of working. And what I really see is that when we are out there doing it, even those people who 
maybe even kind of feel a little bit silly doing it. Um, something moves and something shifts in them and um, that they feel a benefit from it, even if it's a moment of grounding, even if it's a moment of um, dropping out of the stress of the moment and starting to connect with a, a kind of a, a wider view, a more expansive view of why they're there and what they're involved in. Um, so this is why we're really keen to kind of roll out and share um, kind of our, our ways of work and our process so that more people can can bring that to different campaigns. Thanks, John, for mentioning this, because, of course, that quote opens up our website. It's the first line um, uh, on it. It's spiritual people becoming active and active people becoming spiritual. And I think um, somebody just said it gives hope and meaning to activism and helps prevent burnout. I think that's something if you are interested in that whole subject, because uh, burnout is a problem. Uh, Activism fatigue, compassion fatigue, you know, all of this. Um, Andrew Harvey might have, who is our next speaker, might have to say uh, a lot about this radical regeneration. Um, but the thing I wanted to say is, Anne, um, I mentioned before that we do the gatherings. And if you could come to the next gathering, which is on the 21st of February, and you will get that if you join the mailing list, you might find like right, uh, people up near your uh, where you live and um, yeah, where the nuclear power station is. And maybe you can do something. We also, uh, I wanted to say, we also are happy to support you in building something up, a ceremony or something if needed. You know, if you have, uh, contact us. We only have that much capacity, but but we are happy to support you. And if I can speak to that personally, I would like to express my, my uh my gratitude to you for supporting uh, the uh, the people of Peru uh, during their their very difficult time uh, when when the uh, president was arrested and the indigenous people uh, rose up and the government cracked down violently on those protests. Um, it was sacred earth activism was one of the first voices uh, that uh, went out in support of these people. Um, uh, at least, at least in my in my knowledge, and and the series of uh, events that we we held together to bring attention to the issue, I think, were uh, very important, and and uh, I I personally am very grateful for that participation. And John is of course very modest because modest because he was part of it. <laughs> <laughs> he was part of the organizing this uh, and brought in some people from Peru uh, who were with us for one of the evenings. But yes, that's when I said before that we are sometimes reacting. You know, it's not all that we have a concept. If big life ev events happen out there, we do react. And there with Peru, John, as you rightly say, we, we just instantly put three evenings on uh, in support of and and uh, yeah, so this is the kind of stuff we do as well. Mm. And it wasn't just sharing information; it was also a holding ceremony and uh, and and really uplifting people who have felt unheard, um, yeah. and 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 bringing the message back to them that they were being heard and they were being supported. Yeah, thank you. It was yeah. And and sometimes it's sorry, Jonathan, I let you in. Sometimes it's really um oh, how shall I say? It's 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 really important to work on that level uh as well, rather than just on the direct action ground, because we can't be everywhere. I wish I would be a medic of medicine San Frontier and be directly on the ground, but we are not. Um and sometimes it takes a lot of effort. So if you want to join us, we, we need more people on the long run. Uh, I mean, what Jonathan did during uh, the last XR action, holding that ceremonial space in Hyde Park, he was exhausted afterwards. And yes, we held it with him, but he was the main person holding this for seven days. And that's a big, big, big action. 
partner to commit to that eight hours per day holding a space in Hyde Park. It is a big action, but it is very, very rewarding because, because we feel we're making a change and bringing action and the spiritual together. Mm. Yeah, I think we're coming almost almost to an end of this session. Jonathan, is there anything else you or John you want to say? Um no, I just seen if there were any other questions that I'd missed coming in earlier. Um Yes, we've kind of will I see a lot of people asking about the mailing list as well there. Um, yeah, we will be sharing more with you on that. It will be really great to see many of you, um, well, over the next day and a half that we still have. Um, uh, there was a question from Max about internationality. Is that another question to what had already been asked? Let me just check. That one was asked about the network kind of uh, internationally. Sacred Earth activism, as Krista mentioned, uh, is is international there, yep. So uh, um, while there's while we're kind of very well represented in the UK here, um, we are keen to kind of see more people kind of connect with others and bring others together um, elsewhere as well. Uh, if the question was to do with the Sacred Lands Charter as a kind of a network, as uh, that kind of that way, um, the only thing kind of additionally to mention is the conversations around the Sacred uh, uh, Sacred Lands Charter have been acknowledging kind of an international perspective idea, as it were, on um, the on ideas of sacred lands. So it's not just focused on, you know, sacred sites here in the UK. It's kind of got a more of a broader perspective. Um, in terms of the network that we'll be creating for um, friends of groups and supporting friends of groups for sacred landscapes and sites, uh, there will be an element of that which will be very local to the UK because of the specific laws that there are here and the specific bodies that there are for um that kind of have the kind of the oversight of places and a lot of those details will be different in different countries but um if that was what uh kind of the the question was to do with um would be very keen to kind of uh, have you kind of join involved in looking with the charter and seeing how well the model that we're kind of developing that may translate into other countries um, in different countries, sacred landscapes and kind of the discussion around them um, is happening in different ways as well. So there's kind of a, a sensitivity to that. But um, but yeah, we are hoping that the kind of in, in the principle of it will uh, will translate kind of around the world as well. And with all of those things, we will share more, and we look forward to sharing more. Um, either via our mailing list and on, on subsequent evenings and uh, really pleased from the responses and the comments that there's that, that it's things out there that you're kind of interested in um, joining us with. So thank you all very much for joining us on this session. Hi. Oh yeah, the next speaker will be Andrew Harvey. If he comes in, I haven't seen him yet and I hope he's coming in. <laughs> Is every time you, especially with speakers from abroad, in different parts of the world, you kind of sitting there thinking, I hope they come in. I hope I got the time difference right, but I hope he's coming in. So we're taking a 10 minute break uh, and then see you again, hopefully, for Andrew Harvey. <laughs>